Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome back to episode 57 of our Let's Play series, Stalingrad to Berlin, playing as the Soviets war in the East II. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be going through the second half of turn 30. Can't believe we've already had that many turns go by. Um, and we, we got quite a bit to cover in this episode because uh, we had a lot to go through in the previous one. So we're, we're going to get right into it. We left off um, just west here of Smolensk, north of Minsk, uh, with kind of this area of the front. And we're going to continue looking at areas where we can try to establish that front line, uh, but not necessarily go absolutely crazy trying to push towards Minsk, right? So, like, we did some crazy things in the previous turn, like this mechanized unit, uh, mechanized core, actually, trying to go this far forward, right, to try to get behind their lines. And although now it puts them in a precarious position, look at how effective it was, because all of these axis elements now are concentrated in trying to prevent that advance and cut them off. So it's been a good distracting maneuver that then allows us to bring up more defensive units here from the north. Um, so these guys are all still um, on refit, although it looks like these two rifle divisions we can set to ready status. And let's see, we're going to take the 334th and 47th rifle division. And I think I want to move them down in this direction here. Right, so now what I want to see if we can do is maybe we don't quite have enough there. We're going to try. So we're going to take the 30, 43rd Guards um, Rifle Corps. We're going to have them advance here against this second Sturm Brigade. And they were successful, which is what we would have expected. But now you see we're going to bring down this mechanized core. This rifle division. We're going to take both of them and we're going to attack this third mountain division. There we go. So this now starts to open up a pathway for our mechanized core to retreat, right? So we're actually going to take this unit right here, stack them in this hex, which now gives us a defensive value of 16, which should be plenty to hold off against any counterattack they may try to conduct. This mechanized battalion here in the back, we're just gonna leave as is, that's fine. So we managed to rescue the mechanized force that had pushed forward to try to cause some confusion and force them to envelop us a little. And as a result, it afforded us the opportunity to build out this uh, more advanced forward line. And then in the coming turns, I think we'll find ourselves in a good position to advance forward here and to push back this 4th SS Panzer Grenadier Division. As we turn our attention south, though, um, we see that there's even some holes, though, in our line, right, where we're just we're barely covering what we need to. And that's been the case for a couple of turns now. But let's see if there's not something we can do here with these Cavalry Corps and Rifle Division that exist. So the Cavalry Corps is really the bulk of the strength here. And I do wonder if it's worthwhile to advance them forward here with this mechanized core. And they have a defensive value of 46 there, right? Which is going to be very difficult to break through. But can we maybe break through here with these two elements of the 73rd Infantry Division? So let's go ahead and try to do that. We have fantastic odds in the attack. All right. It looks like we were pretty successful there. Then, the question is, do we continue moving south here to push? They do have this armor here in light woods. This is swamp terrain on this side. 
So looking at it, I, I don't know how much... I don't know that we have the resources currently available to do a straight spearhead push straight towards Minsk from our current position. But we're going to continue advancing little by little to make sure we're putting the pressure on them and forcing the Axis to put significant resources to try to stop our advance towards Minsk. I would like to think, though, that by the time the, the fall and winter mud season arrive, though, that we can have Minsk um, surrounded. That's kind of my, my goal in terms of timing. We're in the early parts of June here right now. Other areas of the front here, though, we do have a bit of a bottleneck uh, where we don't quite have the strength to push through, and there's even a couple areas here right where I worry about their ability to counterattack and push through. They're at 27 at attacking value compared to our 7. So what I'd really like to do is figure out how can we try to get maybe an infantry element over there. Maybe we take the rifle brigade that we have here, move them over. That did not do a whole lot, but it's something. Do we have support units maybe we can assign? Nothing that's currently of sufficient strength. What about for the tank core? No, nope, nothing there either. Although we will attach um, two AA elements. Let's see if we can do... Yeah, we don't even have that option here with the 222nd Rifle Division. So that that is going to be what it is. I'm going to move... Uh, maybe I'll leave that tank core right where it's at. Now you know what I'm going. Hmm, tough decisions here. I'm gonna leave them right where they're at. I think. Just gonna leave them right there. Let's hop north for a moment here, and they have these encircled units. We're gonna go ahead and turn ground support back on. We're gonna take all of these units, and again, we're just gonna do an all-out attack on them to try to lower their defenses, lower their fortification level. Right? They've been out of supply for a while now. And we are halted pretty early. Really, we have them surrounded with 30,000 men compared to... Or excuse me, they have 30,000 men, we have 90,000. So, I mean, we don't have some huge advantage and they're in fortification level of 3. So that, that makes sense that they're able to hold out so well. Do worry they can counterattack out of here. Is there anything we can add here? Let's toss in this separate tank regiment. That actually probably would have helped too with the assault. See if we can get some armor elements here with these guys. It's just anti-tank. Third guard tank core. Yeah, not too much. Okay. So another turn will go by there with those units surrounding them. South of that position, we have a couple areas right where it looks like we're able to push through. So particularly here, this is a strong point for them. I'm trying to think if I want to go around and then try and circle them, or if I want to just push straight through. I think I'm going to try to get in and around behind this infantry division. I think that's going to be my action here. So to that end, let's take this stack of units. We're going to turn ground support back off. I'm going to attack here. That's four to one. We route at them. It's a good outcome for us. Let's now take... These units south. Right, and they're going to attack this way. Looks like an infantry division was committed. But we still won. Okay. Let's attack now from this side with these units here. Jaeger division was committed. But we still won. Yeah, so now what we're going to do is move these guys forward here. Move these guys down here. We don't have enough movement there for either of them to 
advance, but we could sit here and take this 30th Rifle Corps. I'm gonna take all these guys, go ahead and attack. All right, so they all retreat it. Now we need to get some units in behind them. We're gonna use this mechanized unit here, as well as this motorized unit here. And let's maybe take this rifle core. They don't quite have enough there, do they? Yeah, we're running out of movement points. Gonna take one rifle division and move them over here. Can I get one of these tank cores down there? I can. Let's do that. All right. So now they're gonna have to fight their way out. Yeah, let's see here. Really exhausted that tank corps by bringing them up there. Can't assign anything to these motorized units, but to the tank corps, we're going to add an anti-tank regiment in case of their counterattack. And heck, it's, it's low TOE, but let's add this tank brigade too. Should help. Okay, we have movement we can do here. Not really, too many options there. To the north, this rifle division could come south. I think we're gonna leave that as is. Okay. Down here, we have defense value 16 against, well, frankly, they're heavily outnumbered. So we might, do we maybe withdraw these units? We can withdraw them or we can move these forward and try to attack one of their positions. I think we're going to withdraw them. So they're both part of the 49th army. Let's take the 51st Guards Rifle Corps back one. Then I'm going to toss this 415th Rifle Division down here. And this guy can join in right here. And with that, yeah, we don't quite have enough to push through there, do we? That's all right. Continuing to move east here. Defensive value of 30, so we're okay from our defensive position. We need to start breaking through in more areas of the front here. I really don't know that we have the capacity for that at the moment. We have good defensive terrain here, they have good defensive terrain here. Neither of us wants to move into these areas where there's just clear terrain. It's really the gist of the story. Do I... Boy, that's tempting to do a bit of a rush here on Roslov. Because that's probably where they have a depot, it's also where there's an air base. So let's do this. Let's move these guys here. That rifle division will come down as well. And I'll just split these two rifle divisions. Now if we take both, we're at 29 to 14. That's 2 to 1. Let's give it a shot. A lot of units committed to the defense. We probably won't be able to break through. Yeah. Okay. They held. They held. 
Back here we have more units that are still catching up. I think what I'm going to do is move this guy here. Then I'll move up this unit as well. So that gives us 13. Should be enough to defend against a counter. And then I can take some of these rifle divisions, right? And move them back here. And down here we are. Not, I guess we're not terribly vulnerable to counterattack. Some of you need to be on refit on your HQ, I think. So we're going to do that with you. And I probably need to set you on refit too. Let's bring you back to your HQ and set you on refit. Okay. Back here we have more units. They're all at 6,500. We're just going to set all three of you to refit. So I really don't don't have a lot of opportunities to press the attack here. So there's not a huge point to me rushing them up to the front. I could get up to 12 here. That brings us to 29, 33. I guess we're getting close, but not, not that close. Let's move you up here. You here. This is a nice rifle core, but it has no combat prep. TOE, 50%. So we're going to set them on a refit. There we go. We'll just keep the pressure on this Storm Brigade here and attack. Ah, I should have seen that coming. They had the SS Estonian Motorized Brigade helping them out. So that's why they were able to hold off. I'm really not going to push too much here. Let's move you here. You can come up to have you attack south here. They retreated. Down to the south. Let's push through in a spot or two here. So let's take this stack and attack this hex, I think. Remaining infantry is committed. They held. Okay. Now let's push through with this guy. They held again? That's a little disappointing. Okay, HQ units back there, you're all in range. A lot of rail repair here after that excursion of that unit, so let those guys keep doing their rail repair work. On this side, we do have the 20th Panzer. I think it's about time we start moving this stack down here. Let's see here. Two rifle brigades. That's not that great. This guy looks like he needs some help. Yeah, 50%. Let's first try to push through here. Light divisions committed. So in and around Kursk, the Axis is doing a really good job of having um, layers of defense here, which is really allowing them to have units in the reserve. Um, and because of that too, I'm going to be a little more cautious in my decision making because if I if I stretch myself too much trying to break through, 
and then my units are vulnerable to a counterattack from these reserve units that aren't seeing action in our low fatigue, high combat prep, right? That would allow them to counterattack, and if they then take back the ground, the units I initially pushed back would be in the reserve healing and, and recovering their fatigue. And then it's just kind of the snowball effect to where then I'm on the back foot as they continue counterattacking. So it's not that I'm necessarily worried about some big offensive coming or something for Voroznez or, or, or Ariol, but I do think there's the potential that if I stretch myself too far, the layering effect they have with their defensive lines could cause me some headaches. So that's why I'm just being a little bit more cautious on this side. On that note, let's keep attacking. Um, so what do we have here? Rifle division is not looking so great. Let's take this guards unit. They already have a tank brigade assigned. Don't have anything to assign here. Let's attach this heavy tank regiment. We're going to attack this infantry division. They retreat it. Then we're going to use these guys to attack south here. They retreat it. We're going to do another attack with these guys. And they all retreat it too. So we don't quite have enough though to move forward. That's okay. What I could do though is take this rifle division. And then this rifle division. And do I do the cavalry or do I do the rifle corps? I think I'm going to do the rifle corps. We don't have enough to attack here, but we're really pressing on them now. And here we'll attack right where they're strongest. They retreat it. Right, just keeping them pushed back on the forward lines. We're going to hold some of our defensive positions here that we have established. So again, just worry about them trying to break through, and we just don't have those additional layers like they do right now in some of the areas of the front. And I, I mean, like I would attack this guy right here, but we're attacking towards nothing, so we're just going to leave that. Some of these tank cores, I wonder if they... Actually, can I build you up? I might be able to. No, probably need one more element of them. So let's take them here. Now can I do it? There we go. So now we just have a tank core. What I'm going to do is move them south here. We'll take both of these units and then we'll take both of these to attack their 9th Infantry Division. Ah, 2nd Panzer was committed. So they held and... Ooh! Big tank battle. We haven't seen one in a while. So yeah, let's take a look at how that went. We don't have too much time in this episode for too many battle reviews like this, but when we lost 5,000 men and 100 tanks, I think it, it warrants it. So, what was on the battlefield? So we had a lot of SP guns here with the SU-76s, 122s, 152s. Um, and we lost quite a few of them, frankly. Which is unfortunate because we have a, a bit of a bottleneck in our supply and production of these in, in 1943. It'll get better in 44. Uh, we lost effectively half of our T-34s for the Axis, most of their losses were focused around the Nashorns, Wesp, and Stug 3s, which again are SP guns. Really, they, the Panthers they had in the battle, that's interesting, so let's see if we can see how they did. 
Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, take a look at this, guys. So they had 10 Panther Ds, and they had 25 armor-piercing hits, which destroyed 14 units. Right? That's pretty significant. And when we look at their losses, they lost 5. So they sent 10 Panthers into battle that saw engagement. Five of them were lost. They lost five, but they destroyed 14, damaged another six, as well as um, destroying eight units with HE, damaging 34 with HE. So really, that, that is from a... get the term for it. From a... a technical armament perspective, they were quite successful. Um, and the Nashorns, I think, had a good showing, too. Why, why don't we have those types of results? My goodness. Probably because, well, they, to be fair, right, it's, this, the big part of this was on me, is that we attacked a fortified position with so much armor. I didn't necessarily anticipate that this, the second Panzer Division would be ready to come in and help like that. Um, and really, I think where we suffered most of our losses were probably from the units that were part of the Stug Battalion, um, which is part of the Infantry Division. Because you see, even just the Stug 3s that they had were pretty effective too. Okay. Well, I, I think the silver lining out of this is the 2nd Panzer Division having 36 fewer armor is always a good, good outcome. Right. So that's that's some good news there. Unfortunately, look how much that's weakened these guys, my goodness. So let's take these two guys and set them on reserve. Just in case of that counterattack. This entire stack here. Nope, not the rifle. Okay, these two units. The rifle core, the two rifle cores we're gonna move forward. And then we'll take this rifle division forward. And let's look there at that and say these 20 attack value are going to attack the 121st. Second Panzer again gets committed. And because of that, they held. Oh, goodness. So, where do we really want to have our breakthrough? I guess is the next question because we have. A lot of units still here that could break through. And I'm really curious about trying to get some of these motorized elements in the rear here pushing towards Kharkov. So I think I'm going to attack this hex right here with these two stacks. And we were successfully retreated. They lost 25 armor to our 38, so that's a great showing. And then let's take this motorized unit and just have them come all the way out here. And then let's take... Let's take this tank core out there too. We'll attack this Hungarian Light Division. They held. That might not have been the best move on my part. It really wasn't. So now let's take this mechanized core here. Mechanized core there. Rifle division will come across. Take down this rifle division. And that rifle division. This guy. Yeah, I think that's probably fine as it is. Let's take this guard's rifle core, this other rifle core. We're going to use both of these to attack the 18th motorized. There we go. Good. So what we're doing there, right, is, is making it a little bit more difficult for them to build that pocket around. 
And now the Wiki Nessus Panzergrenadier Division, it's not some easy decision to go and counterattack our thrust here because now their northern flank is exposed to our front line. That's the logic behind that move. This rifle corps over here, I'm actually gonna do a lot of relocating here to this pushed or Kharkov that we have. And I might take this tank corps to support them here. What else do I have back here? I think I'm gonna attack again, honestly. Yeah, I think that is the right call. So push them even further back. Okay. Now all along the front here, we're just going to advance a little bit. See where that puts us on the map. And... 42 to 14... Let's push here. They held. Really? Wasn't expecting that. I move this guy south. We'll attack north here. Route at them. Lost half of their force, that makes sense. Then let's take both these stacks. Nope, don't have enough. Hmm. <laughs> Gonna take this artillery here, set them to reserve. Same thing with this artillery division, set them to reserve. This rifle brigade. It's time to move them forward here. Okay. Going south. So now let's let's do this again. Where we're going to switch to let's focus on Stellino, and then work our way south to north. So then we know what we have to play with here, kind of in the middle of the line. Um. So Stellino itself has defensive value seventy four, but around it, it's looking quite vulnerable, right? Defensive value of 1, 2, and 10. They're a little stronger right there. They have cut off this mechanized unit of ours, so one of the first priorities is just going to be to make sure that we don't lose a mechanized core, right? Um, so we're going to... Let's do this. Let's take just this rifle division and have them assault this position. Well... Let's have them come from the north here and assault. Yeah, so route at both of them, kind of what you'd expect. And do we have... Okay, so they can make it through there, but that's not what I'm going to focus on. Instead, what I'm going to do is take these two stacks and attack the ninth Panzer. They retreat it. Oh, yes! Yes! They lost 95 armor. What a result for us. Um, and actually it looks like they, they had counterattacked us here right in the previous turn. So they lost 2,000 men, 58 guns, 95 armor. Wow. Tigers! There were even tigers in that mix. They lost 10 Panther Ds, 7 Tigers, Five Panzer fours, a ton of light Panzer threes. Oh, this is such great news. Pretty much, so this is really indicative, right, of the position they were in, is they were trying to just hold a defensive position and were attacked from multiple sides here. What happened were these Martyr twos, Wesp, and Hummels, they'd probably gotten themselves so dug in and in position, right, that they weren't mobile enough to actually withdraw. Or you could argue that they, they maybe made the tactical decision to, to have them cover the withdrawal of the other elements of the, um, the Panzer Division. But, uh, yeah, so we had KV-1s in action there, and I'm wondering just how effective those were. 
and the SU-76. So let, let's take a look. So the KV-1S is... Ah, oh, weren't that effective. Okay, they only had three destroyed. So really, here, here's, here's the really interesting bit. Um, we had 1,600 anti... Or not anti-tank, but we had 1,600 guns involved in that fight. So let's take a look at those. Okay, now wait a minute. Where the... What the heck killed the 95... Armor. How did they get that number if the guns didn't destroy them? I mean, the mortars aren't going to destroy a panther. The howitzers with an HE hit certainly could. The 152 mi uh, millimeter, that's, that's certainly possible. And they had 13 destroyed with HE. Um, oh, what the heck? Can't possibly, yeah, we didn't make it up here in infantry. So what, what destroyed that many of them then? Is this just maybe a death by a thousand cuts and there's not one big number that I'm looking at here? Yeah, it's not helping me at all. You know, at a glance here, you'd sit there and you say, is it maybe the mortars? But I, I don't think it is. There is no air involvement. And... Let me just check something here. Oh, okay. Nope. Sorry, guys. That's that's on me. I, I should have caught this. So when we're looking at the destroyed number, there is this column for destroyed during retreat. Right? So pretty much it's that these guys were... They were not destroyed in combat, right, where they're 150 yards away, they're firing at you, you're firing at them, right? It's more so that the entire force was overwhelmed, overran, overrun, um, and as a result, these units were destroyed by uh, uh, by the, the German units maybe sabotaging their own equipment before they left it, or or what have you. Okay, so that almost all the losses here were from the retreat, which probably comes to the overwhelming odds in which we attacked with 80,000 men versus their 10,000. Kind of 8 to 1 odds, right? That's even just thinking about it from the defender's point of view, it's demoralizing when you think about the fact that for every one of you, there's 8 of your enemies, right? So that that explains their heavy losses there. Um, but now we've we've gotten a route to the north of Stilino, which is what our objective was. So I'm going to take like this rifle division here. I'll take this guard's rifle division. And I'll probably bring around this rifle division. So now we have just this full stack here. That in conjunction with our motorized, perhaps we can break through. It looks like we might be able to. Yep. So two routes and a retreat. So they've been pushed back there. Now what we're going to do is attack here. 15 to 2 should be easy enough. They route it. Yeah, I think we're just now going to start moving in some units. This way here. There we go. So we now have Stellino encircled. There is the ninth pan oh did the ninth the ninth panzer retreated into Stellino. Oh my. That's an interesting development. Can the cavalry make it there? They can. Yes. There we go. 15 defensive value. They won't be able to break out now. All right. We have Stellino surrounded and included in that is us surrounding the 9th Panzer Division. That's a good, good outcome for us. We're gonna... Let's take a look at where our depots are. Don't have any up here right now, so we're just gonna move that HQ unit forward. We'll do the same here with this one. Same thing here. 
These guys are on refits. We're just going to have them follow the HQ. To move you south one, probably. Okay, can take off the depots now. And let, let's just kind of finish this up with pushing through some of these spots. We're just going to attack here. There we go. I have this stack attack. Stack attack. I get a little... Repetitive. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm going to stop here. We'll come back to this section because now we're going to work north of Stellino and say where do we want to go. With these guys, we're going to push directly west here. So, manage to capture the depot and they route it. And the, the forces that they have here remaining, they're, we're not going to come into a bunch of resistance because, frankly, what I think has really obviously happened is they've taken the bulk of their... You see, we shattered them even. They lost their entire force. Um, is they, they've had to take their defensive forces here and move them south to stop our breakout from the Crimea. So while we likely will not get Odessa anytime too soon, um, it has forced their repositioning of their entire front line, and it's stretched. Oh my gosh, is it stretched? And I'm really curious to see if they've left anything for a defense of these two um, cities. It, it will be curious to see as we get a little closer. I'm going to now actually move these units north, I think. Because frankly, south, I think we're probably going to be okay. Are we though? No, we're, we're going to move them south because the more pressure we can put on their eastern flank of what's trying to defend the Crimea, the better. So let's push back here. And do we have enough to attack here too? We don't, okay. Here we'll move these guys forward. And we're just going to start pushing through in some areas. So that's 46 to 8. That's good enough. Oh, third panzer's committed. Okay. So with the third panzer, they managed to hold. They lost 30 armor. What we'll do now is a follow-up attack, I think. All right, we managed to win that time. They retreated. They lost 1,000 men, and we captured the depot. And then if we take these two stacks, can we attack here? Yep, they retreated. They lost 24 armor again. Good. Good, good, good. We continue the advance. Might move you south a little. Good stuff. Right here, have you already attacked? You have. Okay. So I have 17 to 10. They're fortified. Not going to really push that. We're actually in a bit of a precarious position in this hex. Where we only have 7 defensive value versus their 28. So we maybe take one of you off. Yeah. So let's take off this naval rifle. We're going to move up the 7th Rifle Corps, so that gets us to 14. Let's see if there's anything that we can attach to you. I'm going to attach this tank brigade. So that should help, yeah. We're up to 15 now. Okay. Wow. This has been really good this turn. Back now south towards the push from the Crimea and south of Stellino. Have to be a little cautious here now, right? Because we... We really did push to try to connect our two forces, um, but we're probably not going to be able to accomplish that. So I'm going to move this guy back to this harbor because maintaining this is very important. And he's actually unready. Oh boy. Okay. So let's take this rifle division south. So that's something at least. And then we'll take entire stack of units and move them here. Yeah, it is not that much.
I am going to do my best, though, to try to surround these guys, I think. And I, I want to kind of force them to push their way through. They're, they will be able to. That there's no doubt about it. But I want, I want them to leave and for us to be able to connect here our forces. That's my goal. This unit we're going to move just to make sure we keep this connection. Move this guy up here. And then I need to get back in contact with these forces. Okay. I actually... Yeah, okay. We'll stay right here. There's a Panzer element there, that's concerning. So we are at risk of them kind of cutting off this line right now. But every turn that I can hold out, the more units I can move south here. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll keep bringing some of these rifle divisions down. Take you over here, I think. This cavalry unit. Let's just see if we can't get behind them a little. Just like they're doing to us, you know? And then we're going to go and actually do something a little crazy. Yeah, so we captured this depot, we got in behind them, we forced that routed unit back. They're gonna easily counterattack, but now now this breaks one of their lines of supplies so it's it's a bit sacrificial of these guys but i think it's going to be it's going to pay off it's the short of it those hq units are still well enough positioned that's fine but down here probably is where i do need to get some more units but as we once we take stellino we should find ourselves with a few more units we can move south going to even bring more south, I think, just because this is so important. There we go. Yeah, three full infantry divisions, but going to at least make them fight their way out. Can I come up here and take the... I guess it doesn't matter as much now that I've managed to, to cut them off there. I'd rather keep the line, I think. Okay, now down to the Crimea. Boy, we're going to do a lot of holding here. Because at this point, it's not the race to Odessa anymore. It's just... We need to hold this so that way they're forced to hold a front line here until we get more reinforcements coming up. Okay. Now up here we're starting to get a little outnumbered. And I think I might want to even pull back like one of these armor units. I'm not... I don't know. I don't know. Let's um, let's do this. Let's take this rifle division down here. Okay. And then we're gonna take this armor division here. Take this mechanized unit here. This guy can come down here. Right. Just have the one unit defending there.
But I really want to kind of strengthen this line as much as I can. Seven, ten, thirty-seven. Give each of them a turn or two to dig in. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at rail repair now. So, do I come south now? I might come back south now to Sevastopol with this guy. Or do I go just these two hexes further? I can go two hexes further. Okay, so you've you've done that now. Now we're just gonna send you back. You can work your way back towards Sevastopol. Okay. Let's look for our other rail repair units. Oh right, we I forgot we actually brought this guy down. So oh no message level. Let's have him from here. There we go. Control nine. Where are my other rail repair units? Here we go. Oh, I did not know I had this much to repair. My goodness. Um, hmm. I think first priority is probably these back here, then work our way this way. So let's do that. Okay, so those are all repaired now. Come back over here. This is a double-sided track, so I mean it's very important to get that repaired. We'll just work our way here as we push towards Riga, right? One of our strategic priorities. We have two more up here. We repair that hex. Repair that hex. Go south now. Come down here. Is he out of rail repair? He is. That's interesting. Repair that one. Getting a little bogged down here with unit congestion now. So let's move this HQ back. So now they're repairing that unit. We're just going to have to wait here for the front to continue advancing. It's really not too bad of a picture when you look at it this way. I need to get a lot more over here though. That's going to become more and more important. Okay. So there's that. I want to take a look at our transfer and withdrawal schedule um, and see what we have coming up here for turn 30, 32. So they arrived on map. Um, two more coming in in two turns. Okay, so what do we have in our reserve box? Let's see here. Oh, didn't mean to go like that. Armor units. Some tank brigades. Probably could start deploying these. This mechanized unit is not quite there. Infantry, we have these rifle brigades and rifle cores. Okay, so we got a couple of rifle cores here. So I think I might bring these in towards the Crimea. As well as the rifle brigades. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So let's go down, see where we want in the Crimea these guys to... Oh, I just geographically forgot where the Crimea was for a moment there. Um, <laughs> Let's have them come in. Is this close enough? Eh, it's too close probably to these tiles. About here. Nope. Here. 
we're gonna have to do it here, which is it's already there. We're already sending in our units here. So let's go ahead and bring in um, some of these tank brigades. Not gonna do all of them or anything like that, but we're gonna bring in some of the tank brigades. And then these can be used as attachments as we try to break through to Riga as well. And then for infantry, we're for sure going to do the rifle cores. And that, I think, will really help. And let's do, um, let's do four rifle brigades as well to try to try to continue putting pressure there from the Crimea. Ah, heck, we'll do one more. There we go. All right. So, with that, let's have AI assist with depots. And we will end our turn. We'll see how this goes. Right, we'll skip past a lot of these air resupplies. Is there now? Actually, those are our, our air resupplies. But I'm certain they'll try to reinforce Vit Vitepesk and um, Stellino as well. Now in their logistics phase. Let's see how surprised we are again. We, we've had a lot of episodes in both the, the Let's Play series of just tons of surprise by what the Axis player has been doing. Um, and that's been, honestly, that's been one of the most exciting parts is just seeing how they're trying to counter my, my decisions. Um, it has been really quite enjoyable. Admittedly, in the other Let's Play series, sometimes nerve-wracking, um, but still very enjoyable. Almost done with their logistics. I thought we're getting close. All right. Bring it on, Germans. Their air phase is going pretty quick, I'm sure. There was a shocking uh, lack of air cover and ground support, I noticed, from the Axis player this turn. I wonder if that was just them. They've lost so much ground, they've been pulling back their air bases and haven't had everything situated in the right spot, or... If it was just that they needed to rest their pilots and their airframes. But but here it looks like they're doing a fair amount. This is more than just recon, right? This is 700 sorties. They've lost 20 airframes in total. 15 of them operationally, so I mean, we can't take too much credit there. Okay. Let's see where they attack. Well, yeah, air resupply, just as I expected there. Okay, where are you moving to? Okay, yep, so they are trying to break out of that pocket. That's understandable. Was expecting that. Wasn't expecting them to double down, though, and push through like that, but we held, shockingly, for the first attack. And the second, how are we holding against those odds? Holy crap. Okay, that time we finally broke. 
Um, so that is unfortunate. Because now it's, it's really going to delay us connecting our two forces here. This is a counterattack just north of our Riga push. They're scouting, I suppose. There was the counterattack, and they were successful. That's fine. We only had a rifle brigade there. This is Peskov. Yep, again, rifle brigade. They're just pushing back. That's that's those rifle brigades doing their job, though, right? It's just focusing their counterattack on them instead of trying to break through our front. This is where it's a little bit more concerning because they've now broken through our connection to that port. Um, so we're going to have to keep a close eye on that. They did just do a counterattack south of Stellino as well. This is up by Leningrad. That's interesting. But we managed to hold that attack. Again, they're pushing up by Leningrad. That's curious. I lost a lot of men for that. They attacked again and lost once more. Surely they're not going to do it another time here. Somehow managed to hold. That is stunning. That time they retreated. That was the cavalry corps that was a little sacrificial, right, to try to cut off their supply line there. And this time they routed, which is under again completely understand that. They were already in a pretty poor condition. Here took some pretty heavy losses, but shockingly so did the Axis player. So we're going to have to start building a defensive line, I think, here as they break through the the point of connection between the two fronts, which is fine. Um, and, I mean, good, good on the AI player there for those decisions because that's really going to slow down our plans um, by them successfully doing that. So I think that's a good call on their part. Oh, okay, so they reestablished a front here, and look at this. There's actually a fair number of units now that are kind of blocking our advance towards the next strategic objectives. And I wonder, at what cost did this, did this come? Does that mean that they have pulled back forces that were stopping our breakout from Crimea? I think that's going to be the really interesting question. They did not manage to rescue this isolated unit here. So that is, again, more good news for us, because now if we have a victory against it, um, it does not have a path to retreat. So that is very, very good news. And it's our turn now. Good. That, that was a lot of, a lot of fun. I, I think the Axis player made some great decisions. Um, I'm looking here at these hexes that are covered, and I'm not sure I remember that being the case, but maybe it is. I uh, just so wanted to take a look at that, but yeah, the con continues to provide a challenge. Um, I'm optimistic that we can finish the the game ahead of the historical schedule and timeline and victory points. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's been easy along the way, right? It's still been a good fight, so really enjoyed it. Just just nearing wrapping up our logistics phase here. I also can't believe it's turn 31. Turn 31. All right. So, let's see what our end of turn summary gives us. Back up to Leningrad as we always do. Um, 75,000 men lost, that's pretty low. 1,300 guns, 800 armor, 360 airframes. Uh, order of battle changes, we saw a net positive of 60,000. Uh, look at this, the Axis with a net loss of 23,000. Uh, they lost 200 guns, they stayed flat on armor. We gained 780 guns, and we lost 380 armor in a net change, so that's disappointing. 338, sorry. Uh, 56 units on low supply, so that number has gotten much better for us. And understrength units at 144 has, has stayed higher than I would like it to be. 
news events, the Mighty Eighth um, continues their bombardment of the German industrial base. Western Europe has a garrison shortage. Wait a minute. So, shortage in Axis requirements in Western Europe caused political problems. The Axis lose one victory point and one AP. And then it says excess garrison in Western Europe. So, exceeding force requirements in Western Europe has political benefits. So, I wonder if this was... And I suppose technically it's a shortage requirements versus an excess garrison. Interesting. And Soviet partisans continue. Uh, is, is the simpler story there. Guys, thank you so much for your support of the channel and the series and, and the game. Oh my goodness, what a wonderful game this is. If you got any questions, comments, or feedback, please toss them in the comments section below. And as always, strategy gamers, hoping you have yourselves an excellent day. Bye now.